Za mene dom je ljubav, za mene je dom i sigurnost, za mene je dom sve što imam. I mislim da je najljepša riječ na ovom svijetu kad kažeš upravo idem doma. From the stone houses along the Adriatic Sea, to the mountain cabins of Lika, to the Mamutits of Zagreb, Croatia is home to four and a half million people. Dom za mene znači prvo moja obitelj. Mjesto gdje mogu biti zadovoljna i sretna sa ljudima koje volim. Jer ja sam isto ratno siroće i svog doma nikad nisam imao. My mind now in Croatia, but my heart in Iraq. But in the autumn of 2015, our idea of home as a place of safety and refuge was challenged as thousands of refugees came knocking on our door. Did they want in or just to pass through? This became a time of serious self-reflection about Croatian identity. And about borders and boundaries. Fences and faces. And it's about finding home. That brings us to the third in our TV series magazine, Croid. Who are we? Tko smo mi? Hello, I'm Darian Fiolic. And I'm Lucia Janković. We start our journey here in Harmica, a quiet village on the Slovenian border. Here and at other border towns, refugee crisis rolled out into a razor-sharp conflict between nations and neighbors. In spring 2016, after the EU closed the Balkan route, protesters on Marko Square demanded reopening the borders for refugees. Disappointed with the government decision, protesters decided to express their anger. The leaders don't think about our opinion and they don't care about us. They just care about their wealth and that it stays like this. So the Europe is closed for them. They created the wars and they will try to maintain them and not let people in. This is one of the handful of the protests against closing the border for people seeking a new home. Here on Marko Square is the best chance for the message to be heard, but the Croatian government still stands with the EU decision. Uh, from my point of view, the change shift of the policy regarding the migration crisis, so-called migration crisis, came in Croatia with the election, with change of the elections and the, and the switch from the left wing to the right wing government. Two months earlier, a political activist group had gone a step further cutting the razor wire on a border between Slovenia and Croatia. One of them was Marko Milošević. Tima vrlo brzo smo našli nekoliko, ovaj, nekoliko zainteresiranih grupa i nakon što smo se s njima dogovorili, našli smo se u jednom malom pograničnom mjestu, dogovorili zadnje detalje, imali smo sa Google Mapsa kartu, dogovorili koji ide u ovaj, onako, taktički ovaj, dvije grupe koja kad dolazi, sredili te detalje, podijelili medije u te dvije grupe i otišli na posao. To je to. Razor wire caused problems not only for people, but for wild animals who got injured and died getting caught in the wire. Marko and many like him believe the wire caused more problems than it solved. Zatvaranje granica neće spriječiti te ljude da nastave dolaziti, jer oni ne dolaze zato što su naše granice otvorene, nego dolaze zato što doslovno bježe pred smrću. Reagiranje na mržnju i strah i nepovjerenje sa mržnjom, strahom i nepovjerenjem nikada u povijesti nije donijelo ništa dobro. Individuals and groups are standing up and lighting the way to try to find a solution for a refugee crisis. The hope remains. In the time of 
need, Croatia opened its heart to thousands of refugees. The first step for many on our soil was right here in Slavonski Brod. The government paid 21 million dollars to take care of the refugees. Building this transition center here in Slavonski Brod was part of the expense. Volunteers from all over the country at several locations provided food and clothes. The sick and ill were taken care of. Among the volunteers we found a doctor from Pakistan and a journalist from Lebanon doing a story about the crisis. Both have been Croatian citizens for years. Andrea Lombarovic reports on how their lives were impacted by this crisis. Hassan Haidar Diab travels the world as a reporter. Born in a war-struck Beirut, he came to study journalism in Croatia at 18. Today, he considers himself to be a real Croatian. Nikad deo Hrvatsko nisam osjećao ugroženim, ne znam ili ne znam diskriminiran i mislim ja radim za neuticanje i najjače dnevne novine u Hrvatsko, hoću mi priznati ili ne. Nikad deo, evo vidite sa kolegama, ja nikada to nisam osjećao stvarno. Uživam ono, 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 ono poverenje, putujem, pišem, sve šta pišem i mi u redakciju objavljuju, nikakve cenzura nema. Being a man from the Middle East, he often experiences trouble with the police, especially since the refugee crisis started. Hassan is stopped and checked because of his skin color. Ljudi, ljudi, nežalost, življavaju i treniraju, ne znam, strogoću na mene. Ali nema vezi, ja ne obaziram, kažem, ne obaziram na ti ljudi. Hassan is mostly disappointed in the people of Syria that have left their home. He believes that people need to stay and fight for their country. Hassan had to learn the Croatian language so he could report on the Middle East war zones from this country. But a Croatian doctor from Pakistan used his native language of Urdu to help refugees coming through the Balkans. Dr. Javed Khan offered his help to children that have lost their home during the long trip for the Middle East, trying to find a new home. Ponekad. Ponekad se osjeća stranac, ali mislim, to su sad rijeđe i rijeđe situacije. Dr. Khan has been helping the police and the social care center identify children that have been separated from their parents during the refugee crisis. Children that are found alone are often sent to the social care center in Dugave, and Dr. Khan is the one that makes contact with them. To je iznimno slučaj, ali to je bilo je par, mislim, u proteklih, ajmo reći, 15 godina, bilo je 4-5 slučaja, evo, najviše. Mislim, djeca inače ovaj, Ne gubi se tako lako, ali mislim u ovoj izbjegličkoj krizi je bilo baš intenzivno o par mjeseci nazad. For both the doctor and the journalist, the refugee crisis reminds them of how children feel in the time of war and tragedy. Ja sam djete rata. Kad su znali izbiti sukobi, i to strašni sukobi, moja mama je znala nas odvesti iz jedna ulice do druge ulice ili iz jedne kuće do jedne kuće, gdje se manje puca. A tu, kad ti bježiš, ne znam, iz Turske, ali se došao na sigurno, zašto iz Turske kreniš prema zapad? For the refugee, leaving everything behind was hard. But finding a new and safe home seems to be much harder. For five months, up to 8,000 refugees went through this center daily. United Nations estimates 650,000 refugees pass through Croatia, and half of them were right here in this center. Six babies were born here and given traditional Croatian names. Before Balkan route closed, most of them boarded the train and continued their journey to Western Europe. But some decided to stay, just like Iraqi student that I talked to. So Husam, why did you decide to leave Iraq and what did you do there? I work in journalist, my job is journalist because my college is journalist. I, I was with the left politic and uh, all my work uh, about, I, I spoke about bad government and uh, I was, uh, have bigger problem with terrorists in my country because this I leave my country. Uh, could you describe your way, your, your uh, trip from Iraq to Croatia? I was uh, traveling airport from Baghdad to Istanbul. After Istanbul, I 
I go to Azmir, is, uh, is in border uh, between Greece and Turkish, and uh, I I travel from uh, from uh, Turkish to Greece, but in Turkish is I was very very hard way because I I was in jungle and. Uh, I am listening only for ways for animal, and I am with people. I don't know who these people, and uh, I take boat. This is uh, like like it's very small and it's very very dangerous. It's maybe one hour and half in, uh, to arrive to to Greece. After Greece, I I go to border. For Greece, between Greece to Macedonia, I as I think is named Salonik. I go first in big ship, after in uh, in uh, bus uh, to Salonik, uh, maybe eight or ten hour in this bus uh, from Macedonia to Belgrade. There's is a lot of people on this train and no space for. For sit, no space for anything. It's very, very hard. I think it's no uh, human away. It's very, very hard. And uh, after Belgrade, uh, I I walk maybe ten hour to uh, to border or center for as asylum in uh, Croatia or Hrvatska. So. I like. Why did you decide to stay here in Croatia? I chose this country, I think, because it's first country in the United Europe. And uh, I'm feel re relaxed in this country and border. I don't know why. And I think all people is respect me and, and uh, I feel very good in this country. What is home to you? My friends here ask me this question and I, I answer my mind now in Croatia, but my heart in Iraq. Okay, thank you. Thank you for this interview. The place where I feel comfortable, uh, it does not necessarily mean that you have to be with um, the family. Oh, se ne može nazvat domom, kak je ovo dom? Kako može biti ovo dom za 11 duša, evo 8 sa 4? Evo, ja sam našao svoj dom, da. Ljubuljan, jer je to dom kojem sam ja odrastala. Decisions made by men can force people to leave their homes, but so can nature. Nature. Beautiful, terrifying, sometimes even deadly. The 2014 Balkan floods forced thousands of people to flee. Lives and homes were destroyed, especially here in Gunja. Nature taught us an important lesson, that home, no matter how safe, can be taken away. But Karla Trstenjak shows us that people working together as one can do amazing things. Flood waters of the Sava devastated Gunja, a village in eastern Slavonia in 2014. Homes were destroyed and the local school was severely damaged, including its unique film studio. But some cameras were saved thanks to the dedicated teacher Josip Krunic. And those very cameras shot the footage that showed the disaster to the world. Krunic started film club Skig, studio of creative ideas Gunja, more than 40 years ago. And since then it has been a place where Gunja's youth learn about film, winning international awards. Nadir, skik student who lost his own house, was shooting the disaster day after day. Two years later, Nadir is still here, filming for Skik. His family's temporary home has been across the river Sava and across border in Brčko, a town in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Nije mi žao nikakvih stvari i mi je sad, sad mi je žao tog vremena koje nisam proveo tu, jer što su već dvije godine gdje ja živim, negdje skroz drugog, gdje nemam nikog od svojih prijatelja u blizini. Nadir's younger sister Leila also follows the passion for pictures. Their family was one of more than 400 who lost their home 
animals and memories in flood. Two years later, some families still live in temporary housing containers. Nadir and Leila will soon move back into their new refurbished house. In May 2014, family Muhovic was affected with flood. The water was this high on their house. They lost everything. Their lives are the only thing they managed to save. This photo reminds the Muhovic family of those tragic times. And this teddy bear reminds Leila of her old life. The parents are working hard to put back life into their rebuilt home. Teško je napustiti dom, ipak je to naš dom, tu smo živjeli, tu se rodila djeca, tu sam se rodio ja. Cijeli život smo tu bili i sada puno ljepših mjesta, vjerojatno ima za život ugodnijih ovo, ali smo ipak tu završili škole, družili se, živjeli zajedno, ženili se, udavali i šta ja znam. Meni je baš bilo puna kapa i baš nisam imala želji da ni da se vratim. Još kad sam došla, kad sam vidjela kako je to sve i onda tad baš nisam. Iskreno nisad nešto, nemam velike želje jer bez posla i ovo i ono kuća se sredi materijalno, to se sve i kupi i namjest. Međutim, sad bez posla i ovo i ono i sad je malo teži. Living near the river is risky and dangerous. Some houses in Gunja look even better than before the flood, but there is a still possibility of past repeating. Da se to ponovi, 80% stanovništva Gunje bi otišlo. Nikada se više vratilo. Ne bi imalo snage. Bojim se da ljudi ne bi imali snage za preživiti ovo opet u tako kratkom roku. Sad bi otvorila sve vrata i prozore. Ne, to da. To da. Roma people are the most numerous European minority, and yet they don't have their own country. Discrimination, bad living conditions, lack of education. That's the reality for most Roma people living in Croatia. But in a village near Slavonski Brod, kids of all ages are enjoying playground funded by UNICEF. Their fight for equality has taken more than 700 years all around Europe. How do Roma people live in Croatia? How does the Croatian society seize them? Dominik Slivar brings the story. Ovo, ovo se ne može nazvat domom. Kako je ovo dom? Kako može biti ovo dom za 11 duša? Evo, osam sa četiri. Željko Todorović crowds his family into this small house. Rains through the roof, muddies the floor, which makes the perfect home for cockroaches. His neighbors are no better off. Želila bi ja da imam malo više mogućnost da imam, da nabacim ovu kuću, barem bi... Dođe mi djeca, nemam dženi da ih stavim da spava. Ja moram dolje, djecu stavim u kreve. Gdje ću djecu staviti na bitonu? To je treći članšan, mislim, gledajte kako gdje živim. Ne želim od grada, nešto od države, ako ne mori. Jer ova moja gospodja ima 900 kuna. Primanje, ona je penzionerka. Ja nemam nigdje ništa. Srečko and his wife Ljubica don't even have a house. They live in an improvised hut. We are here in Caprske Poljane, a Roma settlement in central Croatia which has about 1,400 residents. It looks like most Roma settlements do, underdeveloped and forgotten, a reflection of the people living in it. Roma people face many hardships in Croatia. They are poorly educated, even though Croatia has a mandatory eight-year school program. Jobs are not easy for them to find, and they live without basic living conditions like clean water or electricity. Znači, grad Sisak i centru socijalne skrbi koji nam pomaže, to nam nije dovoljno. Normalno, trebalo bi malo više naučenja sredstava za to sve što bi se trebalo dati i napraviti, ali šta je tu, žive se kako se živi. Official reports say that 17.000 Roma people live in Croatia, but experts say that it's more than double that number. Often discriminated, only five Roma people work in public institutions. One of them is Veljko Kajtazi. To je već i međunarodne nevladnine organizacije već i ove godine u samom izveštaju su rekli da pored srpske nacionalne manjine, da je romska nacionalna manjina najdiskriminiranija i da se radi o govoru u mržnje i sve ono ostalo što opračuje. The education of Roma children is choppy. 
The data shows the 70% that enroll into primary school don't finish. Only one Roma student graduates from the university every four years. Enis Horvat, a first-year student at the Faculty of Healthcare, is one of the few successful students of Roma origin. My tata is on a prometing faculty to talk on the Ennis' example shows the way to the muddy path for Roma to integrate with the rest of society in Croatia. Back here in Zagreb, we trace the roots of multiculturalism in Croatia. Our first female journalist, Maria Uri Zagorka, was also an emergence of society. Always different, always fighting to earn her acceptance. Much like today's LGBT community. Zagreb's oldest tour guide, Krešimir Kristić, reminisces about his friendship with Marija Jurić Zagorka. It's been many years since he's been in her apartment above the Dolac market. She stood out as a writer and as a woman, staying true to herself as a liberal feminist. She was able to get a whole world of people ženskog svijeta kao dijela stvaralaštva koje je tada bila ili tabu tema pa se o toj temi nije uopće razgovaralo jer je bila klima takova da žena je bila zapravo biće drugog reda. Liberal as Zagorka was, history has hidden how she opened her home to Zagreb's gay community in 1950s. The story goes that she befriended two openly gay men, one who rented a room from her. They later obtained her publishing rights. Mogu reći da na osnovu informacija, svjedočanstva, ljudi koji su sudjelovali, koji su o tome čuli, Mogu tvrditi da se na stanu u Dolcu ukupljala gej zajednica. In Zagorka's time, homosexuality was legally forbidden. Today in Croatia, marriage is defined as a life community between a man and a woman. Something the organization in the name of family actually agrees with. Mislim da se brak treba držati te kategorije i na taj način štiti te zajednice. S druge strane, mislim da prava istospolne zajednice se mogu regulirati nekom drugom pravnom okviru. Last year in Croatia, there was 108 contracted life partnerships, including a famous culture journalist, Dražen Ilinčić, and his partner, Alen Kovač. Mislim, ja sam bio ne protiv, ali protiv tog insistiranja na pojmu brak. Zašto insistirati na pojmu brak kad se može, bitno su prava ista. Ali meni se sviđa da se mi razlikujemo, da mi nemamo brak, nego imamo životno partnerstvo. Jer brak podrazumijeva stvarno nekakvu tradiciju tisućama godina staru, koja podrazumijeva jedan heteroseksualni muško-ženski odnos. Mi smo... Mi smo sada familija. Mi smo familija, da. Mi smo jedan drugom ubitelj, da. Dražen and Alen are forging a new family unit. Reflecting Zagorka's courage and vision. Znala je dosta se reći, ne dajte se nikome za je. Da li kažemo dalje, jer je kamera pred nama. Budite svoji i ako ste u pravu, kad tad ćete doći na svoje. Just like this mosque here in Gunja, which is the oldest mosque in Croatia, symbolizes strength, perseverance and rebuilding, Croatian society becomes stronger through diversity. What exactly is home to you? Is it a feeling or a place? A traditional setting with parents and siblings. Or a well-known feeling appealing to our senses. Like taste or music rhythm, our society is slowly changing. Becoming more multicultural. Tibor Trupec reports. Ramon stepped into Croatia culture six years after meeting his wife at a dance festival in Cuba. She talked him into opening a dance school in Zagreb. As a teacher, he spots the differences in rhythm between the two cultures. Despite differences, Ramon snuggled into life here with his family, but sometimes he encounters racism, especially at work. U Rajolicu gdje je Raj, na početku, neki deški su došli, mislim deški stari, 
I onda oni su rekli, e, neću da mi, neću da to radi moj auto. I onda gazda je rekao, dobro, samo kreni se i idi. I would say one experience of racism, which I think is uh, great in two years, you know, in the, in the 16 months. So I would say uh, this country treats uh, foreigners very well. Brian and his brother Clement believe their authentic Sri Lankan food will replace prejudice by sharing their culture. We have uh, kind of played down our spices and made it more, more uh, favorable for European uh, taste. And uh, because of that, we, we have a lot of repeat customers coming in. These new citizens were fortunate enough to build their life here. But that doesn't apply to the new coming refugees. It's, it's a very sad situation. Uh, I mean, they are all human beings. It's, uh, I, I feel for them. Uh, it's a tough call. Uh, you know, today is a gloomy weather. It's raining, it's cold. Uh, and to think that there are kids outside on the on a camp freezing it's it's heartbreaking so i i feel them uh, i also understand uh, some of the problems that the hosting countries are facing croatia is becoming a palette of multicultural identities another group called taste of home used crowdfunding to raise money to start their business we have the different culture different food different language so we are uh, it nice nice people have everybody because different ethiopian so we make a catering now we, we are start we have a facebook page also of course doma chichi senaratne brothers and ramon are teaching new steps in the creation dance of life through food music and language they're creating a rich cultural fusion making croatia a better home for everyone For many people, home is a happy place, a foundation for life. We have seen through these stories that homes cannot be measured by size or structure. A house is not a home. It's a feeling that stays with us through the trials and troubles of life. We carry this feeling within us wherever we go or whatever we do. Home is the essence of homeland, and in Croatia, the meaning of home is being redefined. Thank you for joining us. I'm Darian Fiolic. And I'm Lucia Janković. svojim narodom i biti empatičan, to je dom. To je za mene mjesto gdje se ja osjećam sretan kako je. Da je to prostor na koji se uvijek vraćamo bez odbira gdje odemo tijekom svog života. Djeca, muž, obitelj, prijatelji. Za mene je dom Hrvatska.